Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me uh, thank the Foreign Policy Association for the FBA uh, model. I I just been presented to me, and it's real honor for me to receive it, to re to receive this model on behalf of the General Assembly. So, I thank you so much, and I really appreciate that. Uh, good morning. And uh, this is a very uh, important issue. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk uh, about, especially on the UN General Assembly agenda. It's one of the top priority on the sustainable development uh, issue. So, uh, Mr. Nawail Latif, President of the Foreign Policy Association, Mr. Richard Navari, President, Ibadi Energy and Director of the Foreign Policy Association, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to address this, the Future of Energy Conference. I thank the Foreign Policy Association for inviting me to discuss how to foster a sustainable future through redrowning the energy picture. There is no doubt that the global energy markets has recently exper experienced significant shifts, including since the Arab awakening began last uh, spring. It is no secret that the political protests on some MENA countries have injected significant risk-related volatility into the international energy market. A new dynamic has thus emerged on the global markets and it's expected to have lasting impact on global development. The organization of this uh, conference focus on how changing energy needs are affecting the global landscape is therefore both timely and relevant. It is particularly relevant to the work of the United Nations and its General Assembly. Allow me to brief you touch on three developments on the United Nations on the issue of energy. First, 2012 has been declared by the General Assembly as the International Year of Sustainable Energy for All. I was very pleased to officially launch this International Year in January in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, during the Fifth World Future Energy Summit. By celebrating this international year, the General Assembly established a platform for raising awareness about the importance of addressing energy issues. The international year also drew attention to the pressing need to develop a renewable energy sector and to promote efficient energy, water use, and waste management. As part of this international year, member state and international organizations should work to create an environment that will foster access to energy and to energy-related services, as well as the use of new and renewable energy technologies. The international community should also promote innovation and strengthen employment and investment opportunities in order to address the growing need for sustainable energy. Second, I would highlight the Access to Energy for All initiative of the United Nations Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Ban Ki-moon. This timely initiative undertaken in support of the General Assembly aims to ensure 
that all parts of the world will enjoy access to sustainable energy by year 2030. Third, as a president of the General Assembly, I have selected sustainable development and global prosperity as one of the four key pillars of my presidency. I did so to emphasize the great significance of sustainable development at this point in our collective history and to help chart the way forward. To help consolidate the work of member states and I'm holding a number of meetings this session on energy and sustainable development. Just two days ago on the 22nd of May I convened an interactive thematic debate of the General Assembly entitled The Road to Rio Plus 20 and Beyond. During the debate, many delegations emphasized that energy is one of the critical issues of sustainable development. More than a billion people continue to live without access to electricity. It's clear that the basic energy needs of their daily lives are not being met. Today, more than any time in the past, there is an urgent need to ensure the sustainable use of energy and to address the challenge of energy poverty. Without question, the provision of sufficient and low-cost energy can help to eradicate poverty and improve the well-being of humankind. Low-cost energy can raise living standards and help achieve sustainable development. It is well acknowledged that the more energy we provide to communities, is greater the impact will be on food security, health, education, transport, communications, water and sanitation. Energy has therefore become an important component, if not an essential means of achieving the Millennium Development Goals. Unfortunately, over the past decade, the international community has not managed to agree on meaningful action to tackle the challenge of climate change, including energy poverty. The international community must take serious action to address the impact of climate change. I would urge the adoption of a new paradigm of consumption and production. A paradigm that is designed to limit greenhouse gas emissions, develop mechanisms to improve energy efficiency and ensure that clean technologies are applied to fossil fuels. Build capacities, facilitate access to renewable energy and transfer technology. Given the, glo the global nature of the challenges, threats and opportunities that energy presents, international collaboration is crucial between all interested parties. This includes governments, the academic world, private sector, and civil society. I would call for leaders in policy technology and businesses to work together to develop a new ways to shape the future for renewable energy while also focusing on sustainability. At the same time, global energy prices must remain stable. Environmentally friend friendly means of using clean fossil fuels, including natural gas, must be found. Ladies and gentlemen, next month, world leaders will gather at the United Nations Conference for Sustainable Development 
in Rio, Brazil. They will come together for a once in a generation opportunities to secure a sustainable future and more equitable world. My hope is that world leaders will redraw the energy picture by agreeing to a concrete steps towards eliminating energy poverty. My hope is that the international community will formulate global strategies for increasing access to clean energy, improving energy efficiency, and escalating the spread of renewable energy technology throughout the world. This is a golden opportunity and we must seize it. I would end by highlighting my support for the work of this distinguished audience. I'm confident that the outcome of your thoughtful expert discussions will be very useful to the General Assembly efforts to eliminate energy poverty. Please let us continue to work together towards more just and equitable world for all. I thank you and I wish you a very success.